Hey there, everybody. Welcome back. This is still 6.1 in Calc 2. Uh, and we're doing area between curves still. I'll call this 6.1b. I'm going to show you a problem and motivate a different way. So let's say we have y squared equals 4x and y equals 2x minus 4. And we want the area between where they intersect. So if we graph this, let's see, 2x minus 4. Here we got a rise over run. This is y equals two x minus four. So doing this one, like another way of looking at this is x equals one fourth y squared. Uh, uh, like when x equals zero, y squared equals zero. So we just have zero, zero. When x equals one, y squared equals four. So we get plus or minus two. We've got one, two, and one negative two. And we've got one of our intersections already. Let's see, what's another good one to use here? Two is not gonna, if x equals four, that's a nice one. X equals four, uh, y squared equals 16. So y is plus or minus two, and we get four, two, and four, negative two. I'm sorry, four, not two, four, four, and four, negative four. Gosh, rookie. I knew I was graphing the right thing, but like. So between these, we want this. So if I wanted to break it up vertically, I have a little, it splits right here. And on the left here, upper is the same as lower. So my integral would just have zero dx. So doing dx doesn't work. dx doesn't work here. So instead, we're going to go sideways. We'll do rectangles going this way. So we want upper minus lower. Really, it's greater minus lesser. That's a better way than saying upper minus lower. Greater minus lesser. Uh, and so greater here is this right line, which is y equals 2x minus 4. And the le that's my greater line. My lesser line is y squared equals 4x. But now our width is dy, which means I need these functions in terms of 
I need to have y as a function of y, which means solving these for x. I actually conveniently already did that on that one. If we solve this one for x, we got y plus 4 equals 2x. So x equals 1 half y plus 4. Or x equals 1 half y plus 2. I want to see where they meet. These have the same x values here. So like left side. Well, we're going to, they should both pop out. Uh, we should be able to set these equal to each other. One half y squared plus two equals one fourth y squared. Let's multiply by four. We get, that should be one half y. I'll multiply both sides by four to clear the fractions. I get two y plus eight equals y squared. So y squared minus two y minus eight equals zero. And we already see what they are right here, but in case we didn't, I'm showing you how to do it with equations. So we got y minus four times y plus two. And we can see we have y equals four and y equals negative two. That's gonna be our limit of integration. Negative two to four. We're gonna do the greater function, which is one half y plus two minus the lesser function, which is one fourth y squared dy. So nothing to combine here. Up a power, divide by a power. We got one fourth y squared plus two y minus one sixteen. Nope, one eighth y cubed. Evaluated from y equals negative two to y equals four. And just plug chug. You know how to solve this from here. Okay. Let's do another setup. Those are the ones we did in class without the camera. Now we're gonna do some more. We'll have on this one, x equals nine y squared. And here we'll do x equals 20 plus four y squared. So nine y squared is gonna do something like this. And I'm just gonna sketch it. When y equals zero for the other one, this is over like 20 here. And since this thing has got a lower coefficient than that y squared, it, should be, it shouldn't be as steep going to the right. I don't know what these areas are, but it looks like we're going from here to here. So like doing this pictorially, trying to find the intersection sucks. So instead, I'm just going to set these equal to each other. 9y squared equals 20 plus 4y squared. So 5y squared equals 20. y squared equals 4. So y equals plus or minus 2. And that's kind of what I need. We could find out the x values by plugging it in. x equals 36 on both of them by doing 9 times plus or minus 2 squared. It's clear like doing this as a dx sucks because the left side, the upper minus lower is the same. So we are going to do dy. 
So, and we saw, we said this was negative two and this was positive two. The greater one here is the red one. The greater one is the 20 plus four y squared. We're gonna subtract the lesser one, which is nine y squared. You should be doing grouping symbols on this stuff. Just put the stuff together, that way it's clear. So negative two to two of 20 minus 5y squared dy. You need these parentheses here. It's really the right way to do it. Make sure it's clear this is what's in the integral and dy is on both of them. Uh, we integrate here, we get 20y minus 5 thirds y cubed. Evaluated from y equals negative two to two. So on the left one, we got 20 times two minus five thirds times two cubed minus 20 times negative two minus five thirds times negative two cubed. This is 40 minus 40 thirds. I got minus times a minus is a plus. And here, this is, this is negative eight. This is negative, negative eight times negative five thirds is gonna make this positive 40 thirds in here. And we do the minus, we've got another minus 40 thirds from this minus here. Looks like we have 80 minus 80 thirds. Get a common multiplier or common denominator. We've got 240 minus 80 over three, 160 over three. That's the area there. And that's how we do it. Is that 53 and a third? I think 160 over three is fine. Improper fractions are fine. We've got one more we're gonna do. This one's fun. This is interesting. So the area inside the standard ellipse. The standard ellipse, the equation is x squared over a squared plus y squared over b squared equals one. That's negative a and a, b and negative b. So if I do the top half here, I can just double it because the ellipse is symmetrical. And so I need to know what this function is as a function of y. So we'll subtract over. Actually, what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply through by a multiply through by b squared. So I got y squared plus b squared over a squared times x squared equals one. One minus b squared over a squared x squared. Oh, that should be a b squared right there too. If I multiply through by the b squared, I should have b squared there. There we go, that looks a little better. Maybe we'll write this as b squared times one minus x squared over a squared. I can actually multiply this by a squared over a squared and move this a squared over here. So we have b squared over a squared times, and then when I multiply the top inside, it's x squared. 
when I take the square root, y equals, well, square root of b squared over a squared, those are both positive numbers. So we just have b over a square root of a squared minus x squared. So we are gonna do the integral from negative a to a. And we're gonna double it of this function right here. Because our lower line is just y equals zero. And we're doing dx. I can pull the b over a out. And there's two ways to do this. I'm gonna show the way you would do this unless you looked up the formula, well, unless you do the smart thing, the easier thing. Uh, if you look up the formula on this, the integration of that, it's, it's kind of complicated. It ends up being, I got it written down over here. It's x over a square root of a squared minus x squared plus a squared over two sine inverse of x over a. And we're gonna do that from x equals negative a to a. So I'll do the upper one first real quick, or the x equals a part. I've got two b over a times a over a, square root of a squared minus a squared plus a squared over two sine inverse of a over a. We can see this goes to zero. This is sine inverse of one. Well, that's a theta right there. So this is really saying, where does sine theta equal one? We want the theta, this happens at theta equals pi over two. So the upper one is 2b over a times, we have a squared over two right there, times pi over two. And what do we have here? An a cancels and a two cancels. And I'm left with, pi a b over two for the upper one. When we do the lower one, x equals negative a, same gig, negative a over a, that's gonna be a negative one, but in here we have a squared minus negative a squared. That's again going to zero. And then we have plus a squared over two, sine inverse of negative a over a now. So this is negative one in there. We're gonna do sine inverse of negative one equals theta. So th sine theta equals negative one. That happens at three pi over two, but the domain of sine inverse, we gotta do the other way. We gotta do theta equals I'll write both ways here, three pi over two or negative pi over two. This is the one that's inside the domain of sine inverse. So this becomes two B over A times A squared over two and then times negative pi over two. So this is the same thing as here, but it's negative. And we do upper minus lower. pi a b over two minus negative pi a b over two means we're adding them together. There's two one halves. This is just pi a b. That is the area of an ellipse. You can look it up. I'm gonna go back to this point right here and show you another way to do it. If we had two b over a, the integral from negative a to a, 
of square root of a squared minus x squared dx. If I say y equals square root of a squared minus x squared, then y squared equals a squared minus x squared. And x squared, if I add it to both sides, we got x squared plus y squared equals a squared. This is a half circle of radius A. Which is convenient, that's our radius. This is our, those are our boundaries already. Well, circle is area of a circle. We're doing one half area circle, so one half pi r squared, one half pi a squared. That's that. We're doing the area of that. That's really what we're wanting to find, the area of that right there. So that is our 1 half pi a squared. And if I multiply that by 2b over a, you'll see the 2s cancel, one of the a's cancel, and we're left with pi a, which is kind of cool. You know, if you think about it, when you got a circle, this is a, if we had radius a, this is a, and we get pi a squared. But when we have the ellipse, this is b and this is a, and it just ends up being pi a b. So it's kind of like pi times the x value times the y value. It's kind of cool stuff. Uh, that's it for 6.1. Peace.